So, Section 8.1 is a really cool idea. Um, Section 8.1 says, this is something that we haven't used integration for before. If I have some curve in space, and I want to know how long that line is that I just drew. I don't, know, I don't want to know the area beneath this line. I just want to know how long this is. Total, up to like, so let's say between A and B. How long is this? And we actually call this a phrase that you should be used to, it's arc length. Normally we consider arc length to be only related to circles, but it's a more general idea. So I'm curious about the arc length of f of x between A and B. So let me kind of zoom in right here, let's say. Let's zoom in. And let's go between two parts of this. So the, the more I zoom in, the more linear this becomes, right? That's the whole idea. So this is, all, this is still nowhere near zoomed in enough for calculus. Calculus would zoom in infinite resolution, infinite zoom, right? Funkadelic. But we, we're used to that now. That's what dy and dx means. Infinitesimally small steps. This is still a humongous step, but I can't draw all the time. Um, so I'm going from here to there, basically. Right here, right? You guys with me? So what is this? Remembering that this is a huge picture of what's really going on. What, what, when I go in the x direction a little bit, an infinitesimal amount, what is that? What's the symbol I use for that? Yes. DX. Beautiful. Just like delta x when I'm doing rectangles, that's kind of like how much I move for every rectangle, how much I move over, it becomes dx, infinitesimally small, infinite rectangles, right? Stay with me, how are we doing so far? So that's dx. So what this shoots that, What's this? DY. DY. I love it. I love it. Which is why you can see this is an old picture, really. We see that's why the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, is dy over dx. It is the slope element. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. How are we doing so far? So can somebody tell me, please? How long is this? How long is that? Yes. Square root of dx squared plus dy squared. All right. Was anything I just did horribly evil or hard? No. No. In fact, it's beautiful. It's freaking Pythagorean here. Made a little triangle. Kicks ass. Went a little infinitesimal step over, infinitesimal step up. So how long is the hypotenuse? Well, it's a freaking Pythagorean theorem. Holy shit. Thank you, Greeks. So how do I get, so that's just from here to here. So how do I get the length of this whole thing? What would I do? Yeah, I, I add them all up. And there's an, infinite, there's an infinite number of these little elements, right? So I'm going to integrate. Now, here's what's really cool. Let me work with this for a second. Oh, shit. is really neat. Can I, can you take a second and divide a dx squared out? Just take a dx squared out. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. You actually could take a dy squared out instead, but let's just take a dx squared out. You'll see why in a minute. So let me, let me do one little thing. This is Let's say this is DL. It's actually a little element of length. So here's what's going to happen. If I t factor DX squared out, and I want to take it out of the square root, what's the square root of DX squared? Uh, 
uh, dx. dx. It's crazy. So let me put it on the outside. Let me put it over here. So if I factor a dx squared out, what's left here? Uh, one. one. What happens here? And then what's dy dx related to my original picture? What's another way to write dy dx related to my original picture? F prime. So how do I get the total length? I integrate. So I get the length is the integral from a to b, square root, 1 plus f prime of x squared. That's why I had to take that dx out, so I have a dx here. The integral symbol isn't, doesn't mean shit without dx or dy or d something over here. It's, it's a bookend function. Integration symbol, d something, function in the middle. Right? Integration sandwich. So, for example, uh, if I have, you can kind of tell that we can't work with two, uh, well, let's, let's see. So, if I have, uh, let me make sense, it's not too evil. Um, let me take something from the homework, because this gets a little bit freaky. All right, let's try this. From zero to one. So try to set up the integral that I need to do to figure out that length. What's one good thing to do before I do the integral? What do I need inside the integral that I could do right now? F prime. So what's F prime? Nine x, right? Because the three halves comes down to the one half. I love it. So the length of this is going to be the integral from zero to one, square root one plus F prime squared. What's this squared? No. 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 81. There it is. Well, a nine that get left out of that shit. Now finish that. Finish it. This is an integral you should be able to do. What, what will you tell me? What, what are you guys going to do to do this interval? What are you going to use? Do substitution. Beautiful idea. Now, real quick, if, if that was a square, what's missing that so I can't use u sub? If that was a square, what's supposed to be out here? What's the derivative of x squared? Basically x. So if I let, if this was a square and I let u equal this, what am I missing outside? No, I don't care about the constant. So. If I'm trying to integrate square root of x squared plus 1, I cannot do it because if I let u equal this, what's du? 2x. Gives a shit about the 2. I can always do this, but what, am I, what do I not have? Now, some people were doing this interesting shit. No. 
It's only a constant you can take in and out of a summation. The x is the variable. You can't do this. So if I don't have the x part that the du needs, I can't use u sub. Doesn't mean I can't do it, I just have to use something you haven't learned yet. Calc 2, 5. But do I have a squared there? No. What's the derivative of 1 plus 81x? 81? dx. So do I have the derivative? Yes, I do. I don't have an 81, but who gives a shit about the constants? What can I put on the outside? 1 over 81. Okay, so the constant doesn't matter, it's the functional part. And what's the functional part? dx. I got that shit. Right, so this is completely, the inside's linear, the outside's a dx, I'm good. If the inside's squared, the outside better be x, or I'm screwed. I can't use u sub. I have to do something else. And the way to do this one is one of the, it's like the third thing you learn in count two. It's actually trig substitution. Yeah, that sounds yummy. All right, so if, if I make u equal this, du is 81 dx, so I need to do this. So the 81 dx is du. Uh, I don't normally change these, but I don't know if you guys change these. Some of you guys do, some of you guys don't. So when x is 0, u would be 1. When x is 1, u would be 82. You guys see that? 81 dx is du. And then square root of u, so u to the one half. And then I just, what do you get when you integrate this? So be u to the three halves times two thirds. I like it from 1 to 82, and that's where I lose interest. You just throw that shit in there. Get something. So the only new thing up here really was the form of the integration I have to do to find that length. This is, I really want you to at least realize one thing. The basic idea of an interval is the area beneath the curve. Did I just use it in that way? No. Because I didn't put f of x inside. I put something that represents the length of an infinitesimal piece of that curve. So if I add them all up, integrate them, I get the total length of it. So integration is really flexible, depending on how you construct what goes inside of it. Just like when I re revolve something. Do I even have to draw the 3D? No, I just have to construct the thing on the inside to represent what this is doing. Yes? So you're, you're kind of are you changing the limit definition of the integral when you're doing this? Say again, sorry? Are you changing the limit definition of the integral or are you just using it to your advantage by what you plug in? Oh, oh, so again. Because it's just an infinite sum. If I can write a piece of something, just like we did volumes of revolution, you could write dA and it was the area of that circle and then I can add them all up by integrating them. Right, so integration is basically when I have to add up an infinite number of things. So if you can write a representative thing, you can add up all of those things. That's really what integrals do. The most fundamental use is to find the area beneath something, because you can add up all those rectangles, right? But then you realize, oh, it's any kind of infinite sum business that I have to do. If I can represent every little thing I'm trying to add up, I can then add them up using integration. So I represented a piece of how long this line is. If I add them all up, I get how long the whole thing is. Or not. It's really kind of cool. It's sort of like, I always think of chapter six, the revolution thing, is, is like stepping the, um, uh, the degree from 2D to 3D up, and this is stepping it down. <laughs> this is taking an integration and saying, it's not even area now, it's just length. But I'm still using an integral, it's just what I threw into the integral, what it represents, is going to be what the result represents in total. It's really neat, but...
So that's 8 1. So that's extra credit if you want to do it. Right. 8 2, I'm not even going to talk about if you want to look at that. I have a feeling the title is going to scare most of us away. Areas of a surface of revolution. So it's not just revolving around the volume, it's now finding the surface area of a revolved thing. Really cool idea. So if you're interested at all, I'd highly recommend at least reading through that. See how it relates to section A1. Okay. So there's no questions on that. I want to devote the rest of class time to you guys either working on test corrections or starting the practice final, uh, trying that out, letting me know if you have questions. Yes, exactly. 